So some of you will be very familiar with classroom physics, but for those of you that aren't, this is the newsletter that we send out four times a year to our affiliated schools. It's also available on the IOP website, the current issue. But if you want to look at back issues, they're available on the Talk Physics um, community website, and you can get all of the uh, back issues there. And so that has news of IOP events, resources, events that are organised by other organisations, teaching tips and worksheets. And over the course of, I think we're on our 19th issue now, there have been a number of different ideas and things, and I've tried to pull in. Some of them are from things that um, I, I did all by myself, but most of them are ideas that have come from other people. So I'm just running through a couple of ideas, just as a reminder of the kinds of things you might find if you go back and look at the, the archive of back issues. So uh, on the left-hand side there is something that is um, a resource that's on our Teaching Astronomy and Space DVD. It's an idea about um, teaching the seasons and showing that when the sun is at a more oblique angle, it covers a larger surface area and therefore the radiation per square metre is, is less. Um, uh, and so, so that was, I put that on the back of classroom physics, but you can also find it on the Astronomy and Space DVD. The one on the right is, uh, and it came from an idea from somebody else on the editorial board of physics education. It's about changing the speed of sound by adding carbon dioxide into a bottle. And I did demonstrate it last year, perhaps not terribly well, but it is there. Um, so again, something to look at. These two, the one on the left-hand side is an idea about modelling the Earth and looking at its magnetic field. So very um, appropriate given the John Lewis lecture before lunch. Uh, this is an Earth Learning Idea resource. If you've not come across Earth Learning Idea, it's a, a website that has a, has a new resource every week to do with teaching ideas about earth science. Uh, there's a huge range of activities there. Some of them are very far away from physics. Some of them are much closer to physics, but it's certainly well worth exploring. The one on the right-hand side is something that I hope th those of us who've been teaching a long time I think the pinhole camera is a classic favourite. It's from the Instructions from Practical Physics website, and I hope it's something that if you haven't used before in the classroom, you would certainly go back and explore again, because I think it's a, a key introductory part of any kinds of lessons on light and the eye. Uh, so these are just some samples of the kinds of things that we've had in classroom physics, and I hope you'll find it useful to look back at. Thank you.